Hello, friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we are appreciating the form in transforming toys. And we are down to our last bastard. And that's right, today we are taking a look at the Unrustables Otomo figure, which is, as I understand it, meant to be a convention exclusive outside of the Kickstarter. And fortunately, I was able to get my hands on this guy. Uh, I got the Kickstarter version, like, right as they were putting a stop to the orders. So, came in at the last minute and got it. As anyone with any familiarity with anime could probably tell, Otomo is absolutely meant to be an Akira homage. And this guy is very cool. I did do things a little different with this guy. In the past, I've actually done the videos on the figures first and then done like the touch-ups and detailing and stuff afterwards. But with Otomo, I just couldn't be bothered to wait anymore. Mostly because this guy was sitting in customs for over five weeks. And I was just like, nah, screw it. I'm not going to do the video of the guy without anything on and then do the add-on stuff and then do another follow-up video. So sorry if you're hoping to get a look at what this guy looks like without all of the stuff done. If you're interested in seeing what this guy looks like without all the stickers and stuff on him, Pia has a video that shows off all three of the primary Unrustables figure types without any extra stuff added on, so you can actually get a good feel for what this guy looks like without any added stuff. That said, this thing is very cool. Now, my main complaint with this guy is the same as with Spectre General, in that even though he's red, and he's obviously like a couple of different shades of red, it still comes off very blank looking. It's not as stark as the white on Spectre General, so there is that, but it still does have kind of a very overall blank look to it. But, adding the stickers, it makes a huge difference in bike mode, and also, it's, you might be able to tell, but I actually went in and did panel lining as well in a few different places. Basically, anything that's black on this guy, or rather any of the small lines that are black because the tires and the handles are they came that way, but any of that stuff is stuff I added myself. It just makes those details that are in there pop a lot better. And I highly recommend if you get these guys, if you're thinking of getting these guys, that you at least consider doing some panel lining on these things because it really does make a difference. But anyway, this with the stickers looks so great. <laughs> it's so, so great. It's meant to be an Akira homage and it absolutely comes off as an Akira homage and I love it. Now, I don't have the stickers in quite the proper places for it to be a true Akira homage because I didn't use a photo for reference. I just kind of slapped stickers where I thought they looked good. But it still gets the point across, like big red futuristic looking bike with these kind of graffiti-ish, punk rock-ish stickers all over it. That totally just screams Akira, and I love it. And these this placement is not like a requirement. Like you get a big sheet. You could probably put all the stickers on, but it would look ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I've used maybe like a fifth of the stickers that were on the sheet. So if you were to get a Tomo, you'd have plenty of options in terms of stickers. And now before we go any further, I do want to address the sticker thing. I want to start off by saying that I do not find swears or swearing in and of itself bothersome or offensive. Believe it or not, I actually swear a lot in real life. I just keep it off the channel because I feel like I'm doing videos on toys and it's just not really what I would determine appropriate for the subject matter. And that's really the issue that I have with the stickers with Atomo. It's the fact that these stickers, that several of which have just flat out swears on them, don't really fit the subject matter. And yes, I know, I've seen this argument being made even by the people who've made the figures themselves, that they're called the unrustable bastards. So it shouldn't be all that unreasonable to expect swear words on these stickers. But I don't necessarily agree with that, because ignoring the fact that this is what people are saying, you know, artist versus intent, that kind of thing, we're just not even paying attention to any of that, there's no context for it. The only context we can glean is they're called unrustable bastards. And that's not enough to go on. So it's just swears for the sake of swears, which 
it's not edgy, it's not cool, it's not funny, it's just kind of dumb and really kind of juvenile. And the best way I can think to describe it is it's like the punchline to a George Carlin joke without the actual joke attached to it. It's not funny without the context being given to make it funny. And that's the problem that I have with these stickers. They're just, there's no purpose for them to be there. So yeah, that's my take on the stickers. And that's really all I'm going to say about that particular aspect of them. I mean, it's been a thing that people have been talking about and I just felt the need to weigh in. But yeah, that's how I feel. And as you might be able to tell, I went with the less sweary stickers <laughs> on mine because I just, you know, I think this looks totally fine. And this is something that I think it's worth noting as well, that if you're interested in not using the uh, stickers with swears and whatnot on them, that there are enough, there's enough of a variety and there are enough on there that don't have overt swears on them that you can kind of get away with it. So just worth noting, worth pointing out. But yeah, this bike looks fantastic. And I mean, part of it is I'm sure my own personal bias towards the fact that it's homaging Akira, but I just love this, what the stickers add to this. It's by far my favorite bike mode of the three figures, and they're all the same bike mode, but just having those stickers on there really makes a huge difference. And normally I'm not huge into stickers on my figures, but the reason it works so well for me here is because the stickers are meant to be stickers. Like with other toys, you get stickers and they're meant to add detailing, but that detailing is meant to be more like meant to sort of simulate paint jobs or added like control panels and stuff like that. Whereas these stickers are just meant to emulate stickers that would have been slapped on a motorcycle. So like it pulls off the look perfectly because they are stickers. They are stickers that are meant to represent stickers and nothing else. And now to just take a look at the rider on his own. Let's get these two separated out here. And it is the same exact rider figure that all the other ones come with. Same detailing, same overall posability, same everything. The, I guess, two sort of differences would be the head and the panel detailing on the side that becomes the robot chest. Now, the head on the driver, pilot, whatever, is the same as what you get with the burly figure, but the difference here is that it's done in a dark red plastic instead of black, but you still have that silver paint and the red visor. It's the same design. The panels are a little bit different in that it's got this line going through the middle and these three lines here. It's just, just some like mechanical, technical detail stuff. Whereas what comes with the burly figure is a couple of like two panels that have these circular rivets, almost like manholes that are attached, and then two panels that look more like vents. So slightly different panels there, though those shape panels, uh, just the shape, not these colors, but the shape of those panels are available in the prospect pack which you can get separately on, I think, a couple of different online retailers as well as the Mayhem Mechanics shop site. But yeah, same rider overall. I kind of wish that there was a little bit more to the face sculpt, but at the same time, it's, it's fine. It doesn't really bother me at all. Plus, one thing that could actually work, which I need to do at some point, is if I swap this head out for one of the heads that come with Burly, then he'd have a black head with the red everything else and that would actually I think work much better to get across the look of Kaneda from the movie because you know he had black hair so you'd have the kind of red biker outfit with black hair I think that could actually work pretty well and one other thing I did which people might be wondering you probably saw from the thumbnail anyway but there is a tiny sticker or a couple of tiny stickers for the white and blue pill that you can actually put on the rider's back and it won't affect the transformation or how he connects to the bike or anything like that. Problem being, the peg holes that you need to have access to and the ball joint there, uh, they're pretty much right where the pill would normally sit because it's supposed to be higher up on his back between his shoulders. So you can't really get a movie perfect alignment with the pill sticker unless you don't want to transform him ever. Which is possible, because, I mean, this is the mode where it shines the best. But if you do plan on transforming this guy, 
you're not going to be able to put this in its proper location. Which is fine. I think that still looks fine as it is. And it still homages the thing properly. At least in my opinion. So yeah. <laughs> a typical Unrustables rider figure in red and darker red. It looks good. And you can also see some of the places where I did the panel lining that just, again, kind of helps to bring some of that detail out a little bit better. And again, that is kind of my main complaint about this guy and Spectre General, is just that the very overall samey with slightly different shades color palette is just, it makes things look a little bit blank. So, something to keep in mind. And size comparison-wise, the rider is the exact same height as the other riders, which is to say roughly the size of the Samus Amiibo. So no real difference there. And then next to a Power of the Primes Deluxe, you can see that he's uh, that out of the way. You can see that the bike is pretty, pretty sizey. It is a very nicely sized bike. I like it very, very much. As I've said in the past, these figures are a very substantial size. I feel like you definitely get your money's worth. I mean, regardless, you get your money's worth, but just in terms of overall size, I think they're also worth it. And then, just to get this out of the way, as a sort of reminder, here we have the rider with a Power of the Primes Deluxe in robot mode, so you can get a better idea of how tall it is there. So yeah. Now, I normally wouldn't go into accessories, but because this guy is kind of a... Uh, not going to be super easy to track down. I figure might as well. So the rider comes with two accessories, a nicely painted sword and a gun that kind of looks like it's got like a joke flag hanging off of it. I, I don't really know the story behind this. It's a little bit goofy looking, but you know, he can he can hold them as you do. And he does look cool with the accessories. Let's I think my main problem with these is just the fact that they kind of they're kind of difficult to put on the bike like to store them because they're kind of long as usual these peg where the pegs are there are holes there and they do peg into place but this placement makes it really tricky with like lining it up and if you do get it placed on there, it just kind of stands out a lot and gets in the way of the stickers. And same on this side, where you've got the sword that can plug in there, but it's, you know, it, it just, it just kind of stands out a little too much. It doesn't quite gel with the look of the bike to have these sticking on the sides there. I think in bike mode, at least, it looks best without the, uh, without these bits attached. So I'm going to just take these off real quick. And there we go. Okay, so small accessories off. Then the big accessory that the figure comes with is this really awesome looking sword. Like, my god. Wow. This is basically Cloud's sword from Final Fantasy VII, more or less. And it's really cool. I like that they painted the whole thing silver and the handle is black. It's got some nice kind of simple general mechanical detail but still looks cool and the shape of it's neat too it's got this like divot in there and then this bit here is actually it's like a, a gap there which just functionally i'm sure it doesn't really do much but it's still cool and then this attaches the usual way of the other unrustable weapons where it just clips in there and as with everything else it's way too tight and scary to do but you can clip it in and have it sticking off the front there like it's a jousting thing and I don't think it looks bad per se, but again, it kind of gets in the way of the visual homage that this whole figure is going for. So generally speaking, I think if you get it for the Akira homage, you're not going to want to mess around with those accessories. Anyway, I think that is going to do it for the motorcycle mode, which again, fantastic homage to Akira. Now let's take a look at that robot mode.
And here we have Otomo in his combined robot mode. And surprise, surprise, it's awesome because these figures are awesome. They're they're just all awesome. Now, right off the bat, this figure had the same issue as Spectre General in that the fact that virtually everything is red made everything look kind of samey across the board, kind of blank, even though there's slightly different shades of red. And the differences in shade is more noticeable here than on Spectre General, but still a bit kind of blank looking so went in with the panel lining and stuff so all this added bits all the added bits that you can see here that are actually with like the darker kind of tones in the cracks and stuff like that that's all stuff i added on my own but again it's an easy thing to do and i highly recommend doing it because it makes a world of difference but uh yeah without it it's still a cool figure just a little bit on the blank side and yeah, Otomo is the same figure as Burly and as Spectre General. The main difference here, aside from the color, is the faceplate, the chest plates, and the fact that he's got stickers on him. And getting a look at that chest plate a little closer here, you can see that it is, in fact, a pretty nice looking chest plate. It's, I actually really like this design. I think I prefer it to the stuff that came with uh, Burly. I don't know, I just, I like that needlessly futuristic technology kind of patterning <laughs> that, that happens in panels like this. I think it looks good. And the head sculpt is basically the same head that comes with Burly by default, the one with the skull on it, only without the skull on it. So instead, you get this kind of red and black face-plated face. And that's fine. I think it looks fine. I kind of wish there was something a little bit different to this that set it apart from the others, but at the same time, I can understand why they didn't really. Plus, I mean, it's, you know, I'm not entirely sure what they could have done for a faceplate that would be in a, that would work as an Akira homage. Still, there's nothing particularly special about the faceplate and the, the bits up there. I, I did that on my own, so it's this bit and this bit up here that it comes as, and this is the only faceplate that comes with a Tomo. You don't get any additional faceplates, so something to be aware of. You can't swap it out. I mean, I guess you could if you had another figure, but it wouldn't color match because it'd be white or yellow. Another thing that I think is interesting about the way Otomo works, and it really brings attention to how these figures transform, is the fact that all the stickers that were visible on Otomo in bike mode you can barely see any of them. Like, there's just a little bit down at the legs here that you can see from straight on, and that's it. They're still there. He's got a lot of stickers on his back and on the sides, but they are covered up. And now here, <laughs> this is where you've got that cool kind of further Akira homage where you could put the pill on the back there, and it totally calls to mind the outfit that Kaneda is wearing. Again, You'd have to kind of put it up higher, but it would be on the windscreen if you did that, if you wanted it to be in the right location. So you do have to make do with having it a little lower down, but that's it's fine. And it still looks cool. I like the fact that you're given the ability to kind of homage this particular aspect of his outfit on, in both modes. That's neat. Yeah, I do think it's cool how all those stickers are, for the most part, just gone when he's in robot mode. Works really well. Now for the accessories, these would stand, uh, would attach on the back here, just in these spots here, and they would be hanging down. And they don't really get in the way, which is good, but the problem is they get in the way during transformation, which is one of the main reasons why I wanted to take them off, because they just are annoying when trying to transform around them. You can transform him with the accessories on, but you have to kind of very incrementally like turn them along that peg as you're transforming. And it's just, it's, it's more of a hassle than it's worth. So I just took them off and I'm probably just going to be throwing these back in the box now that the video's done because if this guy is in bike mode, the accessories don't really look right in it anyway. Though I will say, this is very cool as an accessory for this guy. So he uses kind of a masterpiece style thing where it's got pegs on either side and there are peg holes in either hand that you can see right in there and you just line it up take it in and close up the hand and that's all it takes and that's cool i mean you can just have him standing there with the sword down looking all don't approach me or i will cut you down because of the range of motion on these guys you can also pretty easily have the sword just kind of nonchalantly slung over his back. You can also do the uh, 
do the hand on the hip thing, which is actually how I've had him posed while uh, while he's on my shelf. So yeah, these guys are fun. <laughs> in case you didn't get that in the other two videos that I did, these guys are a lot of fun and they look very cool. I have the same issues with Otomo that I have with Burly and Spectre General in that these pipes kind of get in the way during posing when you're trying to move the arms around in some instances. They can kind of bang against the back a little bit. And the way the shoulders are jointed can be a little difficult to get around in certain poses or going from one pose to other specific poses. I mean, you can learn to work around them, but it's a little bit disappointing. I kind of wish that the arms weren't quite as like they're just they're restricted in weird ways. But this is a universal problem because they're all the same figure. So it's just how it is. Anyway, keep him up there for size comparisons. And here you can see Otomo with Power of the Primes Deluxe and the Samus Amiibo. And yeah, these are very nicely sized robots. I put them, I guess, roughly around leader size. And yeah, they're just, they're very cool. I've said this a ton of times already, but if you get the opportunity to get an Unrustables figure, do it because they are great. Tomo might be a little tough to get a hold of unless you go to a convention and happen to find him, but he's totally worth it too. Especially if you're into anime and have an appreciation for Akira, because, I mean, how could you not want an Akira homage if you are? But anyway, one more comparison. And here we have the three primary figures all lined up there. Now, there is a purple one that's meant to basically be an unpainted prototype looking thing. It was a very limited release. I did not get it primarily because I didn't really like the color scheme all that much, and I think these three are enough, because I don't have the money to troop build the entire set of these guys, or the entire, granted there are only two of these guys, but still, I don't have the money or space to do one for every character, so I'm down with just having the three primary color sets, the white, red, and orangey yellow, and yeah, these just, these look, these look so good. <laughs> They really do look good. And you may notice Spectre General now actually has panel lining detailing as well. Kind of looks more weathered than panel liney, but still, it makes him look less blank. It makes more of those details actually stand out, and I very much appreciate that. I'm just going to be repeating what I said with the Burly video and the Spectre General video, and that is that these things are just great. The transformation is surprisingly simple but fun. There's really no fiddliness to it. There's nothing that's annoying to do. The rider is quite posable. The main combined robot mode is also quite posable with just a couple of small nitpicks here and there. Also would be nice if they had a little bit more of a heel, but still just a fantastic set of figures and really you can't go wrong with any one of the three. But anyway, that has been my look at the Unrustables Otomo and by extension Burly and Spectre General. Lovely figures. But I'm curious to know what you all think. If this is your first time hearing about Unrustables in any capacity, what do you think? Do you like the look of them? Is there something about it that bothers you? If you do have any of these figures, which one do you have? And does the lack of sort of definition on either of these guys bug you like it did me? Or do you not care? And you're not going to bother with any sort of modifications whatsoever because I could understand that perspective as well because I'm usually hesitant to do any tweaks to my figures and if you are planning to get any of these figures which would be the one that you would choose I mean assuming you could only choose one because I'm rather partial to Otomo just because of that Akira homage but they're all really cool like I keep saying but whatever you think if you feel like chiming in you can let me know down in the comments while you're at it you can also feel free to like or subscribe any combination of those three things would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art, even art that homages other art, is more than meets the eye.